So one of the most underrated and under the radar features that iPhones have nowadays is going to be standby mode. And standby mode was introduced with iOS 17, so it's been around for a year now, and I wanna show off some of my favorite standby mode widgets that you guys can download today because I think it's one of those features that really doesn't get talked about enough and it also doesn't get used enough. So let's get into it. So I do want to mention a few things before we actually talk about those widgets and those applications. First and foremost, this does require iOS 17, but there's two different versions of standby mode. First off, you have the iPhone 14 Pro and newer iPhones that do support the always on display, meaning that when you have the standby mode on, it actually doesn't go away and you're able to physically see it at all times. But if you do have an iPhone, let's say 10s that does support iOS 17, you can still get standby mode and you still are able to use all the widgets that I mentioned. It just won't be on the always on display because those iPhones do not actually have that. And the phones that I have are the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the iPhone 13 mini. Both support standby mode, they just support it a little bit differently. I just wanted to make that known. And then lastly, before we get into these actual applications, I wanna bring up how I personally use standby mode. So standby mode for me is kind of a distraction reduction situation. So I like, I like to have information at a glance, maybe like the time of day, my calendar. Sometimes I like to know that I'm getting notifications, but I don't wanna be distracted by constantly getting buzzed and constantly being known exactly what's there. So being able to use standby mode at my desk to maybe have a timer set or see what time it is, maybe see the temperature, control home kit which we'll touch on in a little bit that's usually my personal use case it stands at my desk on its side and then I also use it in that alarm clock mode at night to make sure that that kind of acts as my alarm moving forward so those are my two real use cases and there's a bunch of other ones that we'll take into consideration as we go through these applications but leave a comment down below what your favorite use case for standby mode is and if you even use it at this point all right, everyone, before we get into the actual widgets themselves, let's go into the standby mode settings so you guys are fully aware of what to expect when it comes to standby mode. But if you go into your settings, scroll down, standby mode actually has its own dedicated section. And there's a couple options here that you should definitely take into consideration. So first off, you have the option to toggle it off and on if you want to. So standby mode will turn on when iPhone is placed on its side while charging to show information like widgets, photos, frames, or clocks. You can also tap in here for the display itself. So you can turn off the display automatically after 20 seconds or turn off the display never. So when set to automatically, the display will intelligently turn off when the iPhone is not in use and the room is dark. You also have standby with in night mode, which turns everything red, very similar to how the Apple Watch Ultra goes into night mode. Then you also have motion to wake. So standby will turn on the display when the motion is detected at night. And then you also have a couple other ones like show notifications and then show previews on tap only. So I like to keep this turned on because even though I do like to see that I get notifications, I don't want to see exactly what's being said in, let's say, a message or an email unless I physically tap into it. So I like to know who it's from. But if it's a message from a huge group chat that I don't want to deal with, I'll kind of just swipe it away and then deal with it after I'm done with my work, which I'm going to touch on in a little bit. And now to actually get into standby mode, it's very easy. You do have to have your iPhone in locked mode. So let's lock it down and then turn it sideways. And then the gyroscope itself should be recognizing that the phone is in standby mode or that it is sideways and it'll get the standby mode turned on. And you can see that it did it here. This is one of the predetermined ones and predetermined views that you get directly from Apple. And now I will say some people think that you need to be using a wireless charger in order for standby mode to work. And that is not the case. If you are plugged in physically into your iPhone, as long as it's charging, whether it's wireless, regular MagSafe, non-MagSafe, or physically plugged in, if you are in landscape mode and you are running iOS 17, it will turn on automatically. So that is how you get into standby mode. So as I mentioned, we're gonna be mostly talking about widgets, but in order to get that done, you do need to be able to navigate standby mode. And there's a couple of ways to navigate standby mode. So this is what you're greeted with, and depending on when you actually open it up, you might be greeted with something different, but there's three different categories to choose from, and then within those categories, there's different modes in those categories. So this is gonna be the first one, which is a clock one. So you can swipe up and down on these to get different versions of the clock itself. These aren't widgets, this is just what's predetermined from Apple and you can see that there's a bunch of different ones. So this is the one that I personally like the most, but you can also edit each one of these individually. So if you long press and then you can actually adjust different things for each one of these clocks. So like I said, you do have the digital, you have the analog, you have a bunch of different other ones like the world clock, the floating clock, and then the solar clock. And then on the bottom right hand corner of each one of these, you do have a little dot right here. And this dot allows you to actually change the color skew and the color theme of every one of these clocks. So if I tap on here, you can see that I can change it from the rainbow color to something else. I like to keep it that way, so I'm gonna leave it that way, but 
let's say if I go to this analog one and I tap on this, I can actually change the color of the hand right here. So I can see that it's changing the Wednesday to purple, the stick to purple, or the hand to purple. This one gives you different colors, which is multicolor, so the Wednesdays are red, a little bit more familiar. For this one, you can get a little bit more granular. So you tap on here and it changes the color of everything. So if I want to change it to this blue and green color, I can do that. But this is what you get to customize in this version of standby mode for this category, which is going to be the clocks category. So then we press done. And then to navigate it to the other section, you actually have a second category, which will be your photos. So any and all photos will show up here and it shows up in different categories based on where you've been, you know, your pets, for instance. So that's my dog and it'll show the location and the date. And if you tap on it, it doesn't do anything, but you can keep swiping through these and it'll basically go based on categories of what you see in your photo library, which I think is very cool. So that's one way to go through standby mode and it is a slideshow as well, which is great. So it just kind of goes through here. And that's going to be category number two. And now the third category, which is my personal favorite and the most customizable, will be your actual widgets. So if you swipe over to the left, you can see here that I have two different widgets. And this is where you really get to customize what your standby mode can be and what you're able to use with it. Now, of course, there are some native widgets that are on here that people use that Apple does provide you. And you customize this the same way you would customize any home screen or any widget. You long press and then you're greeted with this view right here. And of course you can make this a smart stack. So this takes a lot of cues from the normal widget system, from your home screen and your lock screen. You can see here that I have the weather widget here. I have smart rotate turned on and widget suggestions turned off, but I can turn it on if I wanted to add some widgets that it suggests. But then you add widgets based on this plus button right here and you can change a bunch of different ones as we see fit, which we're gonna touch on in a little bit. And then same thing applies for this side. You just long press on this side and you can do the same thing here. So you basically get two widget views, but you can smart stack them, smart rotate them and add widget suggestions as well. Well, all right, everyone, now that we know how to install the widgets, let's actually talk about some of the widgets that I personally use. So let's swipe over to the left here and you can see that this is going to be my main widget screen. So on the right hand side, for the most part, I like to keep this as my main right hand side one, but I'll show you some other varieties later on. But this is basically the weather app. So I know the temperature in the morning, I know the temperature pretty much in the middle of the day, and I know the current temperature. And then on the left hand side, especially when I'm working, this is going to be the Timery app widget. So Timery is exactly what it sounds like. It's a very simple application to help you time certain focus modes or help you time certain, you know, daily tasks. And then it tracks everything on a daily basis and then gives you reports back. But it's very self-explanatory. This is my current work one right now. So as of right now, I did start it through the application and it is counting down. So this will be taken into account. And again, this is by Timery. So if I open this up, there are a few different Timery ones to take into consideration. This is the graph one, the work one, the keep reading one. So there's a few different options to definitely choose from, which I really like to use. Again, very simple application just to turn it on to make sure that, hey, if I need to work for an hour, I can see the countdown happening and then I can go back and reference it later on. So the first one is gonna be Timery, which I do like to use on a daily basis. Another one that I like to use a lot, which I actually just removed for the sake of being able to add a new one, is going to be the HomeKit app. So HomeKit is exactly what it sounds like. You have a few different widgets to choose from. The main one that I like to use is going to be this one right here, the accessories widget. So we add this on here, we'll press done. And then you can see that I can control some of my main accessories directly from this standby mode widgets. So being able to know that it's turned off when nobody's down there or vice versa, if somebody does go down there, I can turn it on for them. This is a great little shortcut to be able to do that directly from your standby mode. Now the next one I wanna bring up is going to be eye screen. So if I long press down here, I'm gonna change one of these. We're gonna add here. Eye screen is one of my favorite widget creation ones that's out there right now. So if I add a widget, I have a few different ones that I've preloaded on here. So we can add to choose right here. And I have uh, the flip clock on the right, the flip clock on the left, and then the flip album. So if I do this, let it do its thing, you can see that there is a flip album that I can then add my own pictures on here that will eventually, as you can see, move over to the next image. And what I like about iScreen is that it gives you an abundance of different widgets to choose from, not only for your standby mode, but then also regular widgets. So again, if I go on here and let's say I want to add another iScreen widget, so we'll add widget here, long press, current widget, let's put on the flip clock to the right. And then you'll see what exactly this does. We'll hold this one down. We'll add this one. We'll go to eye screen. We'll add this widget, flip clock to the left. And now you can see that my new clock is now this kind of old fashioned flip clock, which takes up the entire screen of standby mode. So eye screen has a bunch of widgets like this. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what that looks like. So if I rotate this way, automatically it goes away from my standby mode. 
And what I like about iScreen is that it has a whole section purely based for iOS standby mode. So this is my favorite one right here, which is the X panel. It gives you some of your kind of connectivity statuses, your battery status, the chipset, how much disk space you're using, your calendar, and what phone you're using. But there's a bunch of other ones down here which use that same kind of protocol, which is the right left one. This is another cute one, which I like. So they do have a freemium version. So you can use some of these for free, but some of them do require a subscription. I believe right now it's $9 a year. So, so if that's something you see worth it, then definitely, especially for this one, check it out. Now, if you're a big sports fanatic like I am, I know that NFL season is right around the corner. We still have some baseball going on and then eventually basketball will be playing. So what I like to do is have a sports alert widget. Now, obviously there's a bunch of different sports applications out there, but sports alert, in my opinion, is the best when it comes to widgets. So you have two different ones to choose from, you know, team scores, which you set favorites inside the application itself, but then you also have the golf leaderboard for any active tournament that's happening. So all I have to do is add this widget, and what I like about it is that it gives you live scores. So team source, favorite teams, which is cool, teams to choose. As you can see, we'll have my, all my Miami teams, we'll press Miami Dolphins because that's probably the next one. We have the default color, pregame countdown, which I'll turn on, and pregame odds. And then you can see as I move away, this is Miami's next game on Friday, 8:23. It's two days away, the countdown has begun, and Tampa Bay is favored by three points. So this is one good way to see that I like to have persistent, especially if it's maybe a weekend and I have it charging on a nightstand and things like that. Very excited for football season to come around the corner, so this is a good one. The next one is Pretty similar to Timery, but it's the other way around. It's maybe if you're going on vacation or you have something coming up and you want to add it to a calendar and add a countdown to it, you can add the countdowns widget from the countdown app and it's exactly what it sounds like. It basically has a large version of a countdown of, as you can see, there's a birthday happening pretty much in a year's time, but the countdown is live and I like to do this with trips and maybe with special occasions, with birthdays, just so I can have the next thing top of mind so I don't forget to maybe buy a gift or forget to maybe plan something later on. And that's what I like to see. So again, that's just a simple countdown widget and I'll link all these applications down below for you guys to check out. Another really fun one is going to be lookup dictionary. So basically what this is, is that every day there is a word of the day and it shows up here and it also gives you a brief description of what that word means. So here we have a thespian, which is relating to drama. So I can press a little favorite button right here to favorite each word. If maybe it's a word that I wanna have in a database for me to be able to use later on inside of the lookup dictionary application. But again, it's just a daily word of the day, which rotates again on a daily basis. So I like this one as a fun one to improve your vocabulary if you can, just by having this up in your standby mode. And I quickly wanted to bring up a couple honorable mentions as well as one more secret detail that most people forget about. But the last couple widgets that I do wanna bring up, first and foremost is the battery widget. This one's very self-explanatory. I just like to see the status of all of my iDevices and how much battery they have left. And then another one from the health application is going to be for cycle tracking. And I'm not somebody that tracks you know, a cycle or anything like that, but I know it's important for some people. So being able to have this and be able to track it for health reasons is definitely a huge plus. But now the last thing I do wanna bring up is if you scroll all the way to the bottom of this widget list, you have this little other section. And if you tap on this other section, these are other widgets which are technically not specifically made for standby mode, but they have their own form of widgets that you can add to your standby mode. So what I like to do is go into this health one and actually look at the weekly vitals and add this widget. And the vitals application is something that's coming to iOS 18 because I'm running 18.1 here. And it's basically a glanceable look at what you're dealing with when it comes to a health vitals perspective. So if you look at that, you get to see all the different vitals that I'm dealing with and to make sure that I am within that normal range, which is that blue mark. So being able to have that from the other section is definitely a huge plus. And then one final limitation when it comes to these widgets, if you do have a smart rotate or smart stack of widgets on here, the limitation is 10 total widgets in one stack. So if I add one more here, if I type in the health app, maybe do the weekly vitals again, I actually cannot add another one. So this is 10 widgets that I have in here, which it cycles through whenever I need it to. And if I wanna add another one, I do have to remove it or go to the other side. But those are my favorite widgets. Like I said, I'll leave these linked down below for you guys to check out, but definitely leave some comments down below of some widgets that you personally use that I should check out. And now that was just about do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, standby mode has a bunch of different use cases and applications. You know, you can control things like your home application, you can create timers, you can go into focus modes, you can use the crazy eye screen widgets that give you all this information at a glance, which the nerd in me really loves. So there's a bunch of different ways to use standby mode. It just depends on what your use cases are. If you like to have your phone visible at all times like that, or if you even just put your phone away and standby mode isn't something that you even mess with. But that'll do it for this video, everybody. If you did enjoy this video, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end of this video. Also leave some suggestions down below if you have some other standby mode widgets that I should check out and maybe we'll do a round two of this to see what's out there. But if you wanna watch more videos on this one, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video right here. And I personally think you're gonna like this video down here. But that'll do it. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everybody.